Hello, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the last D4 build video on my channel, I think. There's really not much left to do. I just got to install the tilt cylinder, the hydraulic lines for it, uh, fabricate up the winch brake and brush cage, winch rope, a couple other small things, but um, there's not much left to do, so let's get right to it. Here's the winch brake handle that was on here originally, and this is all just kind of a giant welded mess of angle iron and other stuff. And then they had the hydraulic control was used to be on here, but I've, if you missed the video, I moved it up to the stock control spot. But basically it's, it's really simple. This is the brake. <clears throat> Apparently it doesn't do much on these older winches, but uh, it goes back, I believe, to break it. You can't actually set up to go either way, but I think pushing it back is, is how it's set up right now. Rework this and maybe mount it here. And then we don't want to hit, there's a the brush cage mounts right here. So we'll salvage on here what we can. I think this piece is actually original because I have this other winch brake handle. This is off the winch that I pulled for salvage workshop, which is also modified because it was, this is welded in, but uh, this is like, these are all squared, squared off corners. This is probably cut by someone with a saw. This, these are more rounded. So maybe this one's original. I don't know. It's probably not even worth my time to save this. Really, if I don't save that, it's really just this handle and you know, this little grip and I guess this. I'm the one that bent this, by the way, I'm pretty sure. I think I actually have it on video where I bent this. I'll see if I can find it. But uh, yeah, I think that was me. So there is just a big bushing in here and this was like over a bolt. All right, I always get a lot of comments that I'm using the wrong flame because I think the GoPro makes it look really bad. You get a better pair of scissors. Tin snips are not cutting it. This is quarter inch plate, which is actually what this is. So that's the same. But instead of this uh, thin walled angle iron, I got three eighths inch thick walled angle, angle iron. So that'll give that a little bit more strength. And then I also, for the control rod, this is quarter inch wall round tube, which is quite a bit more than it was on there before. So here's the old control rod. It has a little bit of a bend to it. That's not intentional. And here's the internal control rod for the brake on the winch I pulled for salvage workshop. This one also has a bend in it. And from everything that I've been reading, the brake on this original D4 winch is basically not very good. So it requires a lot of force back on that lever to make it work. So I'm gonna overbuild the lever as much as I can, that whole assembly. And then if this ever ends up bending on me, I can always just make up a new one with thicker walled round tube. Good old fashioned boot check there. Make sure you got hardened toes. Good 
got it kind of smoothed out here. For the bushings for this, this must be a cat part number because the outside diameter is all weird. The inside diameter is 5 8 because they use a 5 8 bolt. But uh, the closest bushing I could find is a 15 16 outside diameter. Well, it's actually meant for a 15 16 so it's 0 0.941. So I need to bore this out to 15 16 So I got this adjustable hand reamer. I've never actually used one of these before. 27 30 seconds to 15 16 So maybe we'll step it up. Oh, this thing stinks. Ugh. That's working. Somehow that worked. Tight. That's tight, but that's actually, I mean, it turns nice. These are uh, oil impregnated bushings. So both of these have this little bar here. I thought this was a stop, but um, I don't think it is. I think it's a part of the original support because if you fold this thing all the way back, the handle is gonna hit this nut, so you don't really need to stop. By the way, while I have these out here, you'll notice that this handle, which this whole assembly is way less unmolested than this one, but this has another attachment point for the brake lever that's below it, which would reverse the direction, obviously. This one is cut off, and I, I looked it up in the manual, and this position is for a normal overwinding position where the rope goes over the top of the winch, and this is for if you underwind it, you need to change the way that the brake's set up, so that's what you use this for. Got a little bit turned around because I was looking at old pictures of my tractor when I got it home, and they had this handle installed backwards, and then I looked in the manual here, and this is the seat, so the handle, the little pull handle is supposed to be in back, Alright. Oh, that's gonna be a problem. That's pretty horrible too. That's a lot better. I think that's where it's gonna sit. I mentioned this in a previous video, but this control rod for the hydraulics is gonna conflict. This is the mounting plate for the front of the brush guard. Oh, it actually runs way smoother. Doesn't even drag. The other one was kind of dragging on here. So the other thing is the control rod. It's gonna wanna come, I don't want it to go around. You could run it through this. This is just, this is just a rectangle tube. You could run it through that, but then you're gonna have to build up some kind of long shaft that you're gonna have to assemble underneath. Don't think I wanna do that either. Okay, I think this makes more sense. So I basically flipped it all around back to where it was, the same orientation before where the handle would be up front. 
But then that flips this around. I think I could sneak it out through there. So they're just gonna be that turn. Only downside is it's not like optimized for this thing. I mean, it's gonna, it doesn't go that far, then it goes, doesn't go all the way back. But as long as the brakes and adjustment, that should be okay. Probably gonna grind this flat, so we should bevel it with this area. Okay. Ooh, that's an ugly one. Time for some grinding. Didn't bother grinding this down since it's going to be in the inside. A couple voids in here, but whatever, it's fine. I had to use a weldon link because the non weldon links were all this long and it's going to be tight. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be some sharp bends here. It's going to be tight. Plenty of space here. Yeah, it should be out more. Yeah, there's no real good way to do this, is there? I think I need to just change that angle slightly so it angles out. So I think
think this is gonna have to bend slightly. The good news is that this is hard to bend. The bad news is that I need to bend it. There we go. That might be all I need right there. Yeah, yeah that lines up. So pretty on that side, but that's the underside. Should be pretty strong. By the way, this weighs significantly more than the original rod here, which is a bit, a bit longer. Okay, clearance right there. This isn't tight, so it's not, there's no brake pressure applied right now. This is straight, and we are on the forward, full forward position that I can, since it's all backwards. And up here, plenty of space for my hand to not bump this thing. back together. I need to get a new spring and washer. I'll just use these as temporary. This was in here. Through there. It's tight, but I think I can, there's still paint in there, so I can work that out. That. 
that's better. All right, it's on. Nice smooth action. I guess I need to tighten the bolts down. Um, I can't put this control rod on until the brush cage is on. So we'll hold off on that part, but we already know that fits. There we go. So why didn't I think of doing this before? I mean, it's so much easier. I wasted so much time moving cameras around between mounts. This is so much easier. You idiot. Okay, now for the hydraulic hoses. So we need to go from this junction block here and I'm gonna follow hopefully inside of here and then uh, the cylinder's right here. I already ordered the hoses up. Hopefully they're the right length. So these fittings up here appear to be SAE 45 flared. Um, at least I hope they're not JIC 37, but I did try to measure them. And these are like brass plumbing fittings that I think are also 45 and it sealed those up. So hopefully that's, I got that right. The fittings over on the tilt cylinder are code 61s, which are very expensive for some reason. I'm not sure why. So I order these hoses. I'm usually a little bit uh, too liberal when I order lengths. So we'll see how this turns out because I don't have, I can't actually measure without the cylinder, but I just gave it my best shot. So I'm doing a uh, SAE 45 with a 45 degree bend. These are swivel fittings. And then it's gonna come to a uh, orb fitting. And the idea here, that's gonna be right up on here. And then on the orb fitting, I'm gonna be doing these ag style quick disconnects. Then on the other side of the quick disconnect is going to be the code 61 fitting. And I think there's also a 90 degree. Did I get? Yeah, I got 90 degrees in here too. So these are O-ring boss fittings for, for that. The idea here is um, just to have some flexibility. I have a lot of tractor attachments that have ag fittings. So if I have, you know, access to a hydraulic control right here, then I could, you know, run a log splitter or that kind of thing off the front of the tractor. Also ordered some random mounts, hopefully I need those. So these hoses, all this stuff is dash eight, which I think is half inch internal diameter. And that's, that was on there before. This is all single wire since we're running at a thousand PSI, should be completely fine. I did order these with hose protection and this is from Discount Hydraulic who I've used a ton in the past. They unfortunately forgot the hose protection, but when I contacted them about it, they basically gave me half off on all the hoses. So I came out way ahead. I was debating whether I should order 90 or 45 fittings here. It looks like either would have worked probably. It really needs a mount about up here so it doesn't touch anything. This is galvanized. It's bad to weld galvanized, right? I feel like somewhere in the back of my head. Something's reminding me about that. Oh, is this stainless? Oh yeah, not very magnetic. Right. 
Okay, well it appears an eight-year-old has welded this together, but I think it'll hold. I don't have the correct fasteners. These are drilled for 5 16 because this was also 5 16 The only thing I could find was a carriage bolt, so I'll just use this for the rough end right now. Yeah, I'll definitely put a piece of rubber on each side too. This is just for the initial fit. I had to kind of grind this back a little bit to fit around the nuts. That's okay. Took just about 10 weeks to get this thing rebuilt, but uh, it's here finally. I'm not gonna name and shame the shop. I mean, I don't think it's their fault. The, the, chrome, the chromer that they used is the one that was taking forever. There is a bushing here, which I just noticed, but the pin still fits in here good, so I'm not gonna worry about that. I did see that they reused the lock washers. That's not a good sign, but hopefully this thing doesn't leak. If you didn't see the last video, I fabricated the mount without having the actual cylinder here. So hopefully it fits. Also quite heavy. Oh yeah, uh oh. Eh, it's tight, but it'll work. That's better. So I think it's all the way in. So this should be full tilt one direction. Okay, well it's in. Fit in here pretty well actually. I got lucky I guess when I made these mounts. The one thing I noticed on these pins is the, like, the shoulder right below the head here. It's raised so it doesn't go all the way in. Same thing happened over here on this side. It's like 10 thousandths uh, wider diameter just for a little small section right on the shoulder. I'm not sure what that's about. They definitely did re-chrome it. Ooh. Holding pressure with this duct tape. Oof. That's not gonna work. Well, it ain't pretty. So this first line, had I done this over with the cylinder here when I ordered this stuff, I probably would have gone straight out and then maybe had just an extra length because it needs to go to about here. And that's, that's, it's sticking out there. That's a problem. This other one is too short because of the guard. I think what I'm gonna do though is I'm just gonna cut a section out of the guard right here so I can run it like that. I'm actually glad I split up the lines because when these get ripped out, which they probably will, uh, I can just replace just this line and everything there back should be fine. Oh yeah, that's even better there. Oh. Okay. Okay, let's see if we can get this tacked in before the t-shirt catches on fire. Not 
touching. Good. Okay, last piece of the puzzle here. Off camera, I made this bracket, which is yet another, you know, clamping bracket. And uh, this needs to go here somewhere. I need to find out where. I'd like for it to be like right around here so I can get to the nuts and then it's not drilling through the radiator. So to do that, I need to reinstall the bracket here and uh, that's all been painted. Not sure why I'm epoxying to paint, but it really just needs to stick while I install it. Hopefully the rubber keeps it from wearing a hole in the steel pipes here. This might be the last hole I have to drill on this thing. Okay. So these need to be offset so that the fittings can go on. I'll show you what I mean in a second. So let's see if we can get these in. It's not going to work. I think these need to be flipped. Mm -hmm. Like that. All right. Okay. Putting the O-rings in. This one. I see, I need some swivel fittings. Although this one's gonna go back here. Okay, it's all together. This looks really janky, and I don't know if this is even gonna work when it's you know full tilt. We'll figure that out in a second. Either way, I'm gonna go ahead and order some swivel fittings, just to, and I might have to order a longer line for this bottom one. Not ideal to have this sharp 90 degree bend right in the middle of a line, probably, but the duty cycle on the cylinder is gonna be so small that it won't matter. Not super crazy with how close these are to the exhaust manifold. It's about four inches away. You can see that. So I think that should be okay. We'll keep an eye on it. And that reminds me, I need to get a fire extinguisher for this thing. But besides that, I mean, the lines aren't touching anything. They're pretty solid in here all the way through. Not touching in there. It does look a little janky where it comes out the side. It's really looking like this line's too short, but I do have a swivel on order. So once I get that in line, I'll have an idea. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and roll this thing out and bleed the system, make sure everything's good with the tilt. I am just gonna float the blade out on furniture dollies because I don't wanna fill this whole area up with smoke. Upstairs, there's a bunch of stuff I don't wanna get all gross. It's been like, what, 11 weeks since I've started this thing. I see spider webs already growing on it. So let's do it the right way to start it up. We're in neutral. Clutch is engaged, compression's off. So we're gonna go ahead and spin it over till we get oil pressure. And let's turn the fuel off so we're not hosing down the cylinders and de-oiling them. Oops, wrong way.
Okay, so those lights turning on were the intake heater, which is right here, in case you don't, you missed the previous videos, but uh, we're not, that, that always turns on when it's cranking, but we don't need it. It's, it's like 70 degrees out right now. We shouldn't need it. So let's go ahead and give it some fuel. And then I'm gonna set the camera over here because I'm gonna need two hands. Here we go. Furniture dollies. The blade looks really tilted. Go hit the sides. sensitive. Pretty tight. This is pretty tight, but I think with the swivel, which is gonna add about two inches to that, I think this is gonna work. We'll find out. I think it'll be here before the end of the video. Let me get this thing bled. Been playing around with it. This is definitely a problem right here. You watch, we're, all, we're mostly all the way up. We actually can go up higher, but look at that lower line. It's pretty tight right there. I don't wanna go any higher. We have some clearance in there. And then I go all the way down. Yeah, it's just so tight on there. It's too tight. Are we at, that's full lock right there. So that's a problem. We need to come over. I have it out pretty far. Good. There. Is that it? Thing's awesome. All right. We are in let's do third. Why not? I'm not gonna do any clearing till I get that line fixed.
This thing is awesome. Listen to that sound. It sounds so good. All right, let's park it up. Didn't really have an idea on what to do about the winch rope, but I talked to quite a few people that had some experience. So this winch can do 5 eighths or 3 quarters inch rope. And I believe the capacity, the full drum capacity for 5 eighths is like 485, 490 feet. You want to do is about 2 thirds that. So this is 300 feet of rope, 5 eighths. And uh, I had them, um, they crimped this on. This is the ferrule for the bottom. And this is the biggest size ferrule. This is a B5 ferrule. I got the biggest one because this drum, like I said, supports five eighths three, or three quarters. So if you did the smaller ferrule size, it would probably cause an issue here. I also had him put this swivel hook on. This is kind of an upgrade over typical and then it's you know, nicely swaged and crimped up in here. Some of you probably know this stuff ain't cheap. I checked around quite a bit for prices and one of the best places I found was really close to me is in this place. The final tally here is 655, you know, all assembled, which is nice. And uh, other places were quoting me about 650 for 250 feet with like a cheap Chinese hook and uh, no ferrule at the end. So this is a six by 26, which is a, a class of six by 19. It's basically the same thing. The braking strength on here is about 40,000 pounds, a little bit more than that. So, you know, if you're doing to a one to four working low limit, we'll say 10,000 pounds. Um, the hook is a, uh, I think, I believe it's a five ton working load limit. I also got a pretty beefy snatch block, but uh, this is a 12.5 ton working limit. And then I got some bigger D rings just to kind of, everything's sized together. There's nothing really going to be a weak link. Well, I've never done this before, so we'll see how this goes. Just kind of following the directions. The uh, ferrule fits in here. It's, uh, you know, I don't want to pass myself off as an expert on wire rope because there's a lot to wire rope when you get into it. But I'll just show what I've learned and why I selected all this. So obviously it's going to be overwound onto the winch, which means it goes to the top instead of the bottom. This is a right lay rope. So you can tell because the individual bundles go up to the right. Now, depending on how you have it set up, you might want a left lay rope, but right is the most common. And the way you can tell what to do is you use your right hand if it's right lay, left hand for left lay. This is the drum, this is the line going out, and then this is your anchor point. So it needs to be anchored on the right side, which it is. Uh, now, technically, if I went over to an underwinding situation, I would want a left lay rope since this is a smooth drum. It would help it spool on better. I believe there's less chance of bends and kinks and that kind of stuff. So this is the correct way to wind it on according to everything I've read. You go from an overwind to an overwind. Really the only concern is this thing falling off the jack stands. It probably will, that's okay. Now I know you're thinking that the rope needs to be tensioned when it's put on and it, it does need to be under tension, but this is just to get it on the drum. And once it's on here and I'm ready to go, I'll do some long poles under you know, a decent amount of load to get the, the rope set. So I'm gonna be working right here I have kind of a little switch rigged up with this rope where if I get into trouble, I can, uh, I can pop the, uh, the clutch out. It'll shut the drum off immediately without me having to move around the machine to do it. was pretty much expected so I've moved it back farther on level ground and then I got the axle held in place with some wood screws 
So maybe we'll move Charlie for this one, but I think this will work. Just needs to work for about five minutes. It's a pretty messy spool, but when I do my first load pull, I'll fix it. I'm glad I didn't get more than 300 feet, because this is a lot. There goes the drum. All right, almost there. Okay, well it's on. It was way harder than I was thinking. The biggest help was this extension cord I added so I could engage the clutch and then the other rope to disengage. That was a huge help. And when I do another couple small pulls to set, set the wire, I'll have to get someone to help me because even then that was pretty hard. Of course, this is like the perfect length so that this, if this goes through, it's going to just rip the whole case apart again. I mean, you can see the repair on that one. And by the way, every winch I've looked at has, they're all like that. I mean, even the, the one I got for salvage workshops like that too, way deeper in, in the case. All right. Now, perfect timing. Perfect. This is just galvanized plumbing pipe, by the way. There we go. All right, so check this out. I can actually spool the drum by itself now. Before I couldn't, and that's, if you missed it, I reworked a lot of this drum and uh, it was a little bit tight and I think just the spinning kind of ground down the excess. Also, this thing's clearly been ripped off before and uh, looks like this one has had some repairs done to it as well. This thing is harder to start than the Caterpillar and it's 45 years newer. No, 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 Charlie, come here. Come on, Doc. Big hill here.
Okay, so this is the brush cage. Not to be confused with a rollover protection. It is not that. This thing is very, very heavy. Uh, I don't know what that is, 3 8 wall thickness. Very thick. It weighs probably, I would say, 400 pounds, maybe more. A lot of welding on this thing has been happening. And I'd, I'd seen some cracks, I think maybe underneath. Oh yeah, got some interesting welds going on here. I don't know what's going on with this thing. There's a name on here. Ed Ford, I can't quite make out what this says. The thing that's a mystery to me is this is kind of bent. And it's like, it's, it's like that, I think it's like on purpose to fit the tractor. So I don't know if this was originally on something smaller, like maybe it was on a D2 or something and they bent it to make it fit on a D4, but it's very odd. And when I get it back on, you'll see too, it, it looks really weird. Can fix this here. Looks like there was something here originally. This looks like kind of a hack job on the back. All the stuff's kind of just welded in randomly. I can't bend any of the mesh back, but this is nice to have, I think, for the winch. I don't want the winch rope to come back and chop my head off, so I'll just leave this be. These are the clamps for the hydraulic tilt cylinder lines. Don't need those anymore since I moved that. And then this over here looks like it's a support for the hydraulic control rod and this is actually probably a good idea, but there ain't much left here. I do have some concerns about these welds down here. They, uh, they're not the best. Yeah, I mean, those are a little bit better. So I'll just clean up the bottoms. I did a couple passes. This one is okay. This one I'm gonna grind down and see how bad it is. I was able to uncover this more. This says Medford Steel, which I'm assuming this would come from Medford, Oregon. There's a lot of steel stuff there. Although this company is no longer around. And then I think this is the date, 124.52, so 1952, sounds about right. And then maybe this is a serial number, which is 436. These are all hand stamped. This needs to come off. I almost forgot about this thing. It's got a couple uh, drain holes in it. Got this panel here. Some modifications have been done to it, but uh, whatever. There we go. That actually covers it up pretty nice. I wish I had the one for the other side. I know they took it off though because the direct the starter sticks out, but uh, you know you could just cut a hole for it. And uh, so maybe I'll keep an eye out for one of those.
this needs to be significantly high. I need to probably measure it. We got a new setup, less than ideal since we're on the joist now, um, but we're only pulling a few hundred pounds, so it should be okay. We'll keep an eye on it, make sure they're not twisting loose. And that should give me the height I need, just by a couple inches. There's some cracking. Oof. Maybe I should be pulling from back here. New setup here. So I got the winch chained into the tractor. And uh, hopefully that doesn't go anywhere. Batteries. And I've turned it around because I'm going to have to back the dozer in. I don't have enough space with the tractor here. I think this is going to go high enough. There's going to be a couple inches to spare. Let's raise it up here. wanting to turn. That ain't helpful. That's about it right there. Oh, plenty of space. This might actually work. I just need to back up this hill. Should I wear a hard hat under here? Probably won't do much, but at least it'll make me feel better. So I probably should take off this, since it's gonna wanna go right through there, and this even might be a problem. Probably a good idea to do this before I put the cage on. By the way, this tank was on my property when I moved here, which was a few years ago. I thought it was empty, but uh, thinking I was going to clean it out because I have a bunch of diesel stuff, I uh, drained out a little bit on the bottom, like, like about 10 gallons, and it still looked and smelled really good. No water in it, no dirt. Uh, the filter on the front all the diesel around the filter out front was completely rotten, but uh, once I replaced the filter and that's, I replaced this hose, that's about all I had to do. And there was about 100 gallons of diesel in there. So I've been running it in my ATV and my tractor for a few months now, and it's been good. I even put a borescope in the tank because those tanks don't last forever, and it actually looked pretty good in there. Let's see if I have any footage of that. But yeah, there's at least 100 gallons in there, so I got it for free, basically since the previous owner left it there. This, but then I won't be able to control the blade. 
unfortunately. Really hope this fits. <coughs> That's the only scrape I put on it. It's getting kind of dark, so probably hard to see. Yeah, no other real damage, wow. I was expecting this to go much worse. By the way, this is the space where I'm gonna park it. Uh, there is plenty of room for the tractor and the, the dozer, so there's, I'm gonna park it in here tonight. I can't get it in the shop anymore. Truth be told, I've been racking my brain on how to put this cage on for the last few months, so I'm actually surprised it went this well. So these are in. This is gonna take some adjustment. so far off so it's too narrow right here by about two inches so see if we can bend it a little bit it's actually close this thing's heavy oh yeah I think we got it bit hard. Not great for the paint job. <sighs> yeah, make that work. All right.
Definitely need to put a headrest on there. I already smacked my head on that bar. So it's good this way, it just needs to come down a little bit. I realize I have no place to ground for the welder, so I'm gonna have to sacrifice one of these clamps. Wind is nice. Finished it up last night, but I was waiting for the morning to get some better light. So it's, uh, it's pretty much done. Those welds pretty much fit in with the other welds, mostly straight. There is a couple small items left. One's obviously this hose, which I've mentioned multiple times, so I'll fix that. The other thing I've noticed is these lift cylinders drift. So neither of these cylinders are leaking externally, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a piston seal that's bad. I don't think it's the pump, like the valves in the pump, because I can switch the crossover valve to tilt or lift, and either way, these both drift exactly the same. And I think the way that these are plumbed up, if only one cylinder is bad, they'll both drift. So I'm gonna hold off on that. I mean, it's not terrible. I can deal with it for now. And when I get to the excavator cylinders and I'm set up for that, then I'll, I'll rebuild them then. At least that's the plan for now. I also got the winch brake on last night. It fits really nice. Plenty of clearance here. It's, 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 uh, it's loose right now. So I got it all adjusted up and it only goes about three or four spots before it's too hard to, to pull. So and that seems to be working. But yeah, I'm, I'm uh, basically done. What a feeling. It's been two years to get here. And uh, yeah, I do need to mount a fire extinguisher. So probably right here, kind of out of the way. I also have a chainsaw mount I want to put on here. And I'll need to find a spot to put that. But just really, really small minor details. I'll just call this done. All right, well that's gonna be the end of the build series for this thing. You're still gonna see this machine quite a bit. I'm gonna be using it around the property and that kind of thing and you know, tweaking it, fixing it. But uh, for the main build, I'm gonna call it done. It's done. All right, let's get right into what a lot of people have been asking about, how much this thing costs to rebuild. So I got a sheet here, let's look at it. Okay, so here it is. Okay, so there's two numbers I, I, I tracked here. One is like the required cost and one is my cost. So required would be just like the bare minimum you would need to have a fairly functional machine. So I have it kind of split up here. So this is like the general section, original purchase, how much it costs to transport here, paint, uh, fasteners, which was just kind of a guess on the fasteners. And uh, yeah, that kind of stuff. You can clo close these up here. Here's the undercarriage cost. So you can see the total for each section over here transmission case cover, transmission clutch, and then I, I kind of go through all of it, hydraulics. It's all, it's all in here, mostly. Engine. So anyway, here are the grand totals. So 7,900 for the base minimum, and I paid about 14,000. Now, I still have not gotten the bill for the tilt cylinder rebuild. This company, they said they were gonna drop it in the mail that day. That was two weeks ago, I have not gotten it. And I guess 
that's the kind of business they're running. I mean, it took 10 weeks to get the cylinder. So, I mean, a figure in, I don't know, maybe another 500 to 1,000 for that in this, this total cost. So now I have shared this spreadsheet if you want to look at it. Um, it's going to be in the video description. I'll, I'll put a link for it. There is also the uh, Hitachi prices in there too, but those aren't quite complete yet, obviously. Now a little bit of question and answers. I get a lot of the same questions, so I'll kind of just summarize basic ones. Just my overall thoughts on this build. I think I actually lucked out on this tractor because the undercarriage was in such good shape. And in my experience with it, engine, transmission, all the other stuff is pretty cheap, but parts for the undercarriage are really where it gets expensive. So I see a lot of videos online where people get an old dozer or something running out in the woods and they get it home. Um, and if the engine's good, usually I think there's, <laughs> there's a reason for why it's parked and it's usually the undercarriage because it's so expensive. So in that regard, I think I did pretty well on this thing. Now, if I had to go back in time two years, would I still have bought this machine? I don't know, probably, I think. There's some nice things and some bad things about it. Obviously the nice thing is it's pretty much refreshed and I'm very familiar with all of it. For bad things, I mean, it did take two years of, of work, working about eight to 10 hours a week on it. I could have spent a lot of money and not worked as much, but at the same time, then I'd have a machine I'm not really too familiar with and, and or it might have had its own problems that would end up being expensive. So I don't know, I'm, I'm still pretty happy with this. So what do I intend to do with this? Well, I live on a 40 acre property. Um, unfortunately, 20 acres was logged about 10 years ago. So there's a lot of stumps that was never stumped. And uh, this, this won't handle stumps really easily. So I'll, I'll need the excavator for that. But there's a lot of paths to upkeep. I'd like to cut in some new trails. I also have about a two acre pond that was built about when this was built. So, and it's never really been taken care of. And that was also a big plan with the dozer and the excavator would be to drain that and completely renovate it. And so it doesn't turn into a swamp. So, so what's next for the channel? I'll be working on the excavator a lot, obviously. I know a lot of people are looking forward to that and I'll be using this where I can. There's a lot of jobs for it to do. So stay tuned and you'll see both. Well, that's going to do it for this video and this series. And I just want to say once again, thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. So just you guys watching at home, the advertising from that is paying for this. And for that, I'm very, very thankful. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Hopefully I'm providing some kind of entertainment for you to watch. I really enjoyed working on this thing. This is a lot of fun. So uh, anyways, once again, thanks a lot for watching, guys. And I will see you back on the excavator.